Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. A couple videos ago, I talked about the state of every single first party PlayStation studio. So it's only natural that now I do the same thing, but for Xbox. But as a heads up, I won't be talking about either Alpha Dog Studios, because they just do mobile games and I really don't have anything to say about that, or XGS or Xbox Game Studios Publishing, because that's really just a support studio for third-party deals in the same way that San Mateo Studio or Japan Studio are for PlayStation. So there's really no way of predicting or knowing what they're working on right now, and so there's really nothing to say about them. Uh, even so, though, that leaves us with 21 first-party Xbox Studios. So you all know the drill. Like, share, subscribe. Let's get into it. First up is 343 Industries, the caretakers of the Halo franchise ever since Bungie left to go make Destiny. Um, we already know that they are hard at work finishing and perfecting Halo Infinite, which sadly got delayed out of holiday 2020 and into holiday 2021, which is, I think we can all agree, probably for the best because we don't want it to end up in the same situation that Cyberpunk found itself in most recently. Um, but we also know that they have started staffing up for an unannounced Halo project, and rumors are saying that it could be anything from uh, Halo Wars 3 to a, a spin-off game following Locke's team from Halo 5. And Honestly, I'd be really excited for either one of those because some of my favorite Halo games, ODST and Reach, have nothing to do with Master Chief, so I'm always interested in seeing other things that are going on in the universe. Next up is Arcane Studios. This is the team known for making the Dishonored games as well as the newest Prey game. And we already know that they are working on Deathloop, which was, again, like Halo Infinite, delayed out of that November launch window into just sometime this year and is weirdly going to be a PlayStation timed exclusive just because that studio is a recent acquisition so the deal was in the works before it was acquired. Um, but we also know that this is a studio with, with two separate studios, one in Lyon, France and a second in Austin, Texas. So they are actually probably working on two games at once. We've seen this before, it's the reason why Dishonored 2 and Prey were able to come out only a year apart. So with Deathloop pretty close to coming out, I think that we can also assume that the second team, the one who made Prey, is likely pretty close to being able to announce and subsequently release a game of their own. Safe Money is on saying that it's probably a sequel to Prey, but being as how, you know, They've only done one of those, and the original studio who made the Prey franchise is now back under the fold. It's entirely possible that they could also just be working on a brand new IP. But if that's the case, uh, it'll probably be a little bit longer before we see a new title from them. Number three is one of my personal favorites, Bethesda Game Studios, who we all know are the teams that bring us such industry-leading RPGs as Fallout and Elder Scrolls, and who are currently working on Starfield, a brand new sci-fi IP that presumably will play very similarly to Fallout and Elder Scrolls. And there's even rumors that Starfield could come out as early as later this year, which I don't know if I personally believe just because of how many delays we've seen as a result of the COVID pandemic that we're going through right now. But when you look at the release schedule that Bethesda Game Studios typically sticks to, they do usually put out a major game release about every three to four years, which puts 2021 firmly in that window. And when you also consider that they've recently added a fourth team in Dallas, Texas, because they already had one in Austin, Texas, Montreal, Canada, and Rockville, Maryland, so this fourth team might be enough extra work to counteract the delay that we would have normally seen in the current situation. But whether that game comes out later this year or sometime next year, we actually already know what Bethesda is going to work on next, which is Elder Scrolls 6. And then after that, presumably a new Fallout title. 
so we can expect Bethesda to be making industry-leading RPGs well into the future. Number four is Compulsion Games, and I think they're a little bit of a wild card as far as Xbox Game Studios is concerned, because really they've only put out one major game, that being We Happy Few, and that got some pretty mixed reviews. It had a lot of really interesting things going on. It was an interesting world, it had some great character work, but it just wasn't very polished. But we know that since being acquired by Microsoft, they've almost doubled in size, and they're really taking their time on whatever this next game is, which, whatever this next game is, was also big enough to get the attention of Microsoft to want to acquire them in the first place. And all of this really does reassure me that whatever their next game is, whether it be a sequel to We Happy Few or a brand new IP, will be a marked improvement over their previous game. And that has me excited. Number five is Double Fine Productions. This is the team that's known for bringing us just a really mixed bag of excellent games between Psychonauts, Brutal Legend, Grim Fandango, Day of the Tentacle, just a wide assortment of very good games. And they're currently finishing up production on Psychonauts 2, which is set to come out this year in 2021. But once it comes out, because of the way that they work, there's really no telling what they're gonna make next. They have such an eclectic collection of games that they put out that it could be honestly anything. What we do know about their studio is that since their acquisition, much like Compulsion Games, they've also been pretty dramatically staffing up. So while Double Fine is known for working on many games all at once and having a pretty fast pace of putting out double A level games, I think we can expect that their next games from here on will be slightly larger than what we've come to expect from them in the past. In fact, the original reason why Psychonauts 2 was delayed, because it was supposed to come out last year, was because now that they had the funding of Microsoft, they were able to put a lot more into the game, bring back some features that they had originally pulled out because they just didn't think they'd be able to get it done on time. And that's really exciting to know that this team could literally do anything. Number six is the legendary team over at id Software. This is the team that brought us Doom, and they just put out Doom Eternal last year and Rage 2 the year before that, so it's unlikely that we're going to see another new game announcement from them really anytime soon. However, when we do, it is pretty likely that we'll get two game announcements close to each other because much like Arcane, they have two studios, one here in Richardson, Texas and another over in Frankfurt, Germany. So while one of those studios is almost certainly making a follow-up to Doom Eternal since it performed amazingly well and was nominated for so many Game of the Year awards, that second team could be working on anything. My initial thought is that they could be working on a Rage 3, but being as how Rage 2 didn't really set the world on fire and was generally received with kind of a meh, it wouldn't be unheard of for them to move on to a brand new IP or like bring back Commander Keen in a next-gen situation. And that could be really exciting. Number seven is In Exile Entertainment. This is a studio that's led by industry luminary Brian Fargo and has put out games with some really great world building and writing like Bard's Tale and the Wasteland series. Unfortunately, neither of these franchises have really hit it big on the grand stage and that's almost certainly due to the fact that they're both more standard style CRPGs which have never really, as a genre, had much mass appeal. However, we know that since their Microsoft acquisition, they have been staffing up for a new type of game. Based on the job descriptions, we can tell 
that they're looking to make a game more in the vein of a Fallout or an Elder Scrolls, something that's either first or third person instead of the typical CRPG uh, over the top isometric view, which if you pair that more immersive style of game with the really great writing and quality of game that we can expect from In Exile, it could be something really great. There's no telling if it'll take place inside one of their already existing universes or be a brand new IP, but based on the fact that Wasteland 3 just came out fairly recently, it's safe to say we're not going to hear about this game for probably a couple of years. Number 8 is Machine Games. This is the studio known for bringing us the excellent Wolfenstein series of games and who just recently announced that they're working on a brand new Indiana Jones game, which is really exciting. But here's the thing. We know that the most recent Wolfenstein game, Wolfenstein Youngblood, was made by a very small spin-off team from the main Machine Games studio. And we also know because Lucasfilm just recently opened up the vault to let people other than EA work with their IP that that Indiana Jones game is extremely early in development to the fact where we probably won't actually get our hands on it for three to five years. But my reason for bringing this up is that means that the bulk of the Machine Games team has been working on something else since Wolfenstein 2 released many years ago, meaning that it's entirely possible that we could get a third mainline Wolfenstein game sometime later this year or maybe very early next year. It's a little bit of a crack theory, but there's a lot of rumors to the effect of this, and I, I think it holds some water. Number nine is Mojang, and there's not a whole lot to say about this studio. They're the team that brings us Minecraft, and while they have in the past been known to do more spin-off style games like Minecraft Story Mode or more recently Minecraft Dungeons, it's really no way of predicting when or what kind of spin-off Minecraft games they're gonna make. So all we can say with certainty is that because of the ludicrous amount of money that Minecraft consistently makes, they're gonna be continuing to support that for the foreseeable future. Number 10 is Ninja Theory. This is a studio that's existed for a very long time but has only sort of recently broke out onto the big stage with the release of Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which unsurprisingly they've already announced a sequel to called Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, which most likely will come out sometime next year unless COVID gets its hands on it. They've also announced that they're working on a smaller game called Project Mara. It's a working title, so by the time it comes out, it'll very likely be called something else. Um, but it's possible that they're actually starting up work on a third game. They've recently stopped support for Bleeding Edge, which was never very popular and only recently came out, so it's a little disappointing to see it die so fast, but the team that had made that and was supporting it is very likely still together and working on something else. I don't expect it to be a huge game, but it is something to look forward to. Finally about halfway done, and number 11 is Obsidian. This is another studio, much like Bethesda, that's known for making really excellent RPGs. They made Fallout New Vegas, Knights of the Old Republic 2, South Park, The Stick of Truth, so sort of a widespread of games but always high in quality. And we know that they're currently working on another large RPG called Avowed, which is going to take place in the universe of their Pillars of Eternity games which is really exciting and it gives me an excuse to go and play the Pillars of Eternity games that I had overlooked for probably too long. Um, but Obsidian is one of the studios that I'm really excited to see what they're going to be able to do now that they're part of the Microsoft family. Because here's the thing, now that Obsidian is in the same studio family as Bethesda, 
that means that they could theoretically make another Fallout game. We could get a Fallout New Vegas 2, and because then Fallout wouldn't have to wait for Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 to be finished, we could get it a lot sooner than we would have otherwise had to wait for it. And now that Lucasfilm has opened up the vault so that other people can make games about Star Wars or Indiana Jones, it's possible that Microsoft could license the Star Wars IP for them so that they could make another Knights of the Old Republic game, which they probably wouldn't be able to call it Knights of the Old Republic because I'm pretty sure Bioware and therefore EA still probably owns that IP, but another Star Wars RPG out of Obsidian could be really exciting. So I'm very interested to see what Obsidian does in the coming years. Number 12 is Playground Games. This is the team that's brought us the critically acclaimed and almost perfectly polished Forza Horizon simulation racing games. And we can expect that their main studio is probably going to put out another Forza Horizon game in the near future, maybe even sometime next year. But in recent years, they've opened up a secondary studio to handle the reboot of Fable which is really exciting because not only has it been way too long since we've gotten a new entry in the Fable series, but because of the level of quality that we can expect from a Playground Games game, we basically know that this Fable game is going to be really good. Number 13 is Rare. This is a legendary game studio that's been making games as far back as the Nintendo 64 and has put out such hits as Banjo-Kazooie, Conker, Donkey Kong 64, and most recently, Sea of Thieves. We know that a small part of their team is currently working on Everwild, a sort of really beautiful looking nature game. It's still kind of unclear what that game is about. but. We don't know what their main team is working on. Sea of Thieves came out in 2018. Surely they aren't keeping the entire team working on doing updates to that. So it's very likely that we'll get an announcement of whatever they're working on next this year. And it could be anything. They, they're known for not really sticking to one franchise for a very long time, but enough people have been asking for a new Banjo game that honestly, I'm starting to think that it's possible that we might get a Banjo 3. And how amazing would that be? Number 14 is Roundhouse Studios. This is the team that you might better remember as Human Head, who made the original Prey game as well as Brink. It's unclear what they're working on right now, especially considering that probably their most famous franchise, Prey, has sort of been overtaken by Arcane. So in all likelihood, they're probably working on a brand new IP, and because when they were acquired by ZeniMax, they were in sort of some really hot water financially, it's unclear how soon or what quality of game they're going to be able to put out. So. They're a big question mark. Number 15 is Tango Gameworks. This is a studio that was started up by former Resident Evil lead Shinji Mikami and is famous for having made the Evil Within games, which are really excellent horror games. If you haven't played them, go play them. I feel like they're really underappreciated. Regardless, we know that they're working on Ghostwire Tokyo right now, which alongside Deathloop from Arcane is weirdly a timed exclusive for PlayStation just because of when the acquisition happened. Um, and after that, because it's also slated to come out this year or early next year, more likely because of COVID, um, it's unclear what they're going to work on next. But my theory is that we know that Konami's sort of been shopping around the Silent Hill <laughs> franchise to get people to reboot it. And there's been a lot of rumors as to who might be doing that from Bluepoint to Bluber, but I think 
that possibly the best fit is Tango Gameworks. Shinji Mikami, you know, he makes the Resident Evil games, or made the Resident Evil games, which aren't exactly Silent Hill-like, but Evil Within has a lot of inspiration from Silent Hill, and I think they could do a really great job with that IP. Number 16 is The Coalition. This is the team that's been taking care of the Gears of War franchise ever since Epic left to go make a million bazillion dollars with Fortnite, which really can't begrudge them for. Um, but they've semi-recently put out Gears 5 and just very recently, like in the last couple months, put out the DLC Hive Busters, which is really good. Uh, so I wouldn't expect to see a new game from them very soon, maybe an announcement, but definitely not a release. Uh, and when we do see that, it's more than likely going to be Gears 6, but there have also been a lot of rumors that they're looking into starting up a brand new IP. My assumption is that that would be after Gear 6, because they really left a, a cliffhanger after 5 that I feel like they'll want to wrap up. But after that, could be a brand new IP, and that would be really exciting. Because while I love Gears of War, I don't think it would hurt for it to take a rest for a little while. Number 17 is The Initiative. There's not a whole lot to say about this studio just because they're brand new. They actually just recently announced their very first game, Perfect Dark, a reboot of the old Rare franchise. And when you look at the quality of employees that they've been bringing in from places like Sony Santa Monica and Insomniac and just all across the board, I think that we can expect some really great things from this game but I also wouldn't expect to get a release date for it until 2022, maybe even 2023. Number 18 is Turn 10. This is the studio that makes Forza Motorsport. It's a little confusing that Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon come from two different studios, but I've just gotten used to it at this point. Uh, Turn 10 has already announced that they're working on Forza Motorsport, which seems to be sort of a the naming convention would make me think it's a reboot, but those games don't really have a story, so I'm not really sure what exactly that means. Maybe it's going to be more of a platform, so it'll just continue to evolve over the years instead of putting out sequels every year, which would make sense given that it's going to be in Game Pass that would probably change the model of that game since they're more interested in just having people stay in Game Pass as opposed to rebuying the game every year. So that's my thought, uh, but either way, it's just going to be another Forza, which is really exciting for people who are into Forza, but otherwise probably not going to do a whole lot for you. Number 19 is Undead Labs. This is the team that makes State of Decay, and they've already announced that they're working on State of Decay 3. But whereas 1 and 2 were pretty similar in a way that was a little disappointing, what we've seen is that since the Microsoft acquisition, they, like a lot of the studios above them on this list, have been dramatically staffing up, and it seems like they're going to make sure that State of Decay 3 is a dramatically different and better game than State of Decay 2, which is really exciting, because that game had a lot of potential, but just kind of lacked polish. So any amount of extra work or money put into that game is definitely a positive. Number 20 is World's Edge. This is a studio that I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you hadn't heard of. It's Microsoft kind of very quietly announced that they were making this studio to carry on the Age of Empires franchise. So they worked on the remasters of Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 3 and are already announced to be working on Age of Empires 4, which is, for a fan of RTSs like myself, very exciting, but we have no idea when to expect this game to be coming out or what level of quality we can expect from this studio. So there's a lot of question marks surrounding it, but I'll take any new RTSs that I can get, to be frank. And finally, number 21 is ZeniMax Online. 
this is the studio that makes Elder Scrolls Online, and seeing as how that's one of like four or five MMOs that consistently has players and is legitimately really good, um, I think we can expect them to continue to support that game for the foreseeable future. They just put out an expansion in November called Markarth, and they generally put out more than one expansion a year, so we'll probably get to this year as well. They just support this game consistently, and it's, it's honestly really impressive, but what's more interesting to me at least about ZeniMax Online is that they're opening up a second studio, which it's possible that that studio will just do sort of support work for ESO, and I would have initially thought that if they were starting up a new game, it would be a new MMO of like Fallout, because that's the other really big franchise from the ZeniMax family. But now that they're part of the Microsoft Game Studio family, there's so many different options as to what a new MMO from them could look like. And it's, it's really interesting. I don't know necessarily that I'll play it because I'm not really an MMO guy, but I'm really excited to see what they end up making. So that's every single Xbox first party studio and what they're working on. And man, I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed. Not just because of the sheer number of games that they're working on, because a lot of these 21 studios that I went over are working on multiple games with multiple teams, but just the weight and the level of quality that we know we can expect from a lot of these games, you know? Halo Infinite, Fable, Avowed, Hellblade 2, Starfield, like, and the list just continues to go on from there, especially if you continue to include just IP that they hold in general. I think it's safe to say that the first party Xbox drought is well and truly over, especially when you consider that they're still actively looking for new studios to add to the first party family. But that's the topic of another video. So if you ended up liking this video, I would really appreciate it if you went down, gave it a like, shared it with a friend, or better yet, subscribe to the channel because your support really does mean a lot to me. But anyway, until next time, I'll see you around.